In this video, we're going to take a look at the new VRA5 for Rhino and some of its amazing new features. Let's take a look. So the first feature that we're going to present is called VRA Light Generator. You can access it by clicking on this button here. And this will open up a small window where you have two options. You have the option for the exterior and you have the option for the interior. What these do, these actually create different types of variations of uh, sunlight based on uh, the variations that we add here. So for example, if you choose exterior and we put sun and sky, it says here that you will get nine variants. Nine variants based on uh, the orientation of the sky and sun. However, if you choose HDRI, you will see here that we have around 35 HDRI images here and we have three variations per each one. And that means that we're going to get 105 variants. Once, let's let's lower this down a little bit. So, for example, uh, if I click generate 69 variants, it's going to give me, uh, it's going to start rendering and it's going to give me uh, many different options of the same uh, exact setup with different uh, lighting options. Now let's wait a little bit and let's see uh, what options we're going to get. Okay, so now you can see that we have a couple of these options generated, but you also have the option to load, to stop and actually load a new, uh, a new preset. So now I'm going to stop this and I'm going to uh, come back. I'm gonna load this once again, and I'm going to pick the exact file that I saved previously. Here it is. And here you will see that we have all of these different options generated for us. And the cool thing about this is that you can simply, for example, click on the one that you really like and the, the whole lighting setup is going to, uh, to be changed automatically. So for example, let's try this one. I'm just going to click here and now I'm going to turn on my rendering engine and I'm going to start the render. All right, so here is our render and you can see that we have exactly the same lighting setup just as we had uh, in that in that particular option. So this just shows you that uh, by just clicking on any of these uh, images, uh, all of the lighting setup here in V-Ray is changing automatically, which is which is a great thing. So when you click on light gen here, you will see that all of this setup here that you have is going to be uh, changed when you click on any of these images. For example, if I click here, it's going to completely change uh, the setting that I have here and the HDR image. Okay, the second thing that I want to show you is called light mix, V-Ray light mix. So what this is, it's um, actually a way that you can uh, manipulate lights even after you finish the, the rendering. This is really useful and the way that you create this light mix uh, asset is that you go here and you create render element called light mix. Uh, this way, you just need to pick to see if you want to do uh, lights IDs or, or group instances or individual lights. In this case, I would do uh, probably, yeah, group instances would, would do fine. And you can see here, this is like a small preview that's gonna show you, okay, so you have the light on the right side, you have the light on the left side, and in post-production, you'll be able to uh, actually change this lighting while the rendering is still, still active. So uh, let's see how this works. Now I'm going to simply click uh, render and let's wait for the render to finish to see how to use a uh, light mix. Okay, so now once we have the rendering done, uh, here on the right side, you will see that we have a source uh, light mix. When you click on this button, it will open up this, uh, this list of all of our lights that we have in the scene. And the cool thing about this is that uh, you can just actually click on each one of these lights and turn, off, uh, turn them off from, from this particular image. In this case, uh, it's not visible because the lights are very, uh, like, they're not strong. So if I turn off, for example, uh, this sphere light, you'll notice that it's going to turn off here. So for example, if I increase this to, let's say, 100, you will see how our room is going to become very lit. And you can also change this. For example, you can do, you know, 50, and you can change also the color. If you just choose some something else, for example, let's choose something red, and you can see the difference that, that you're going to get. And the cool thing is that you can simply export this image and then you don't even need to re-render the scene again. Uh, one cool thing here is that, for example, we can even, you know, turn off the lights from the from the light gen dome. So, for example, here, or if you, if you turn this off to, let's say, 0 0.01, 
you will see that I'm gonna have like a night scene and we can of course increase this even further and we can change the, the light to be something let's say something whitish and you can see how our scene is gonna look if you don't have the outside lights uh, when it comes to the new uh, V-Ray frame buffer, we have new improved version of the frame buffer. On the left side here we have the history panel, in the middle of course we have the image, and then uh, here we can, we can choose the render elements. And again, you can you know save the images, save the channels, and maybe the, the best improvement that uh, we have here are those uh, layers, composition layers. So what would this mean? This would mean that, uh, for example, if you remember uh, previously we did this light mix, and if you click here to composite, it will send them all here. And the cool thing about these layers is that uh, we have the source, uh, the RGB source here. We can even add adjustment layers on top of it. We can right click here, new layer, and let's say curves layer. And you can see here if I change this curve, and here I'm simply going to click and adjust these handles. And you can see that I can do the same thing here as I would do these in Photoshop. I can create my uh, my S curve and modify the lighting if I wish to do so. So without going to Photoshop, we can change and add adjustment layers. And we have uh, you know a couple of options. We have hue saturation, white balance, exposure, uh, cost filmic tone map, and some other ones. Of course, the exposure is always really important if you want to see if you're, if your uh, scene is not exposed enough, you can increase the exposure. Uh, again, turn off the highlight burn, contrast, and so on. And once you're ready with this setup, you can actually save the preset so you can load this preset uh, in the future images as well. Okay, so the next feature that I want to show you is called V-Ray Vision. You can find it here by clicking on this icon. And uh, what this is, this is uh, like a very fast preview of your current scene with your current lights. And what's interesting about this uh, V-Ray Vision is that uh, you actually have control of changing the orientation of your sun and changing the, uh, uh, the, the height of the sun as well, which means that you can interactively do the changes here and then they will be applied to your scene and also to your settings in V-Ray. So you will notice that the quality of this, uh, let's call it viewer, is not as high as you if if you would use a very interactive uh, or very production render so the whole idea uh, behind your vision is that it's going to give you a very fast preview of your current scene if, and of, of your current uh, lighting and uh, now let me show you what what some of the things that you can do, that you can do. so i'm gonna zoom out a little bit here in our scene uh, let me try to reorient this a little bit okay so so if i do uh, if i hold shift and i do left mouse click and if I go up and down you'll see how the shadows are going to be changing and this is because I'm changing the position of the sun uh, right away okay and then let's say that I, that I find the position that I want and now if I do the same thing with right click if I hold shift and right click you will see how my intensity of the sun is going to change you can see how I'm getting very low sun intensity almost turned off now and if i go up it will turn on again and start to be very bright and again this is really fast way that uh, you can you know check out your scenes and see if uh, the materials are fine if you want to change something quickly so it's meant to be like a fast preview of your current scene and uh, giving it the ability at the same time to change the, the lighting Okay, so maybe the best feature that V-Ray 5 um, has right now, uh, in my opinion at least, is uh, so-called V-Ray Chaos Cosmos browser. So what this is, when you click on this icon here, uh, you will see that we have various types of models that we can choose from in, in, our, in our browser here. So for example, if I click on furniture, you'll be able to see you know, all of the models that we have available and we can import this with a single click and let me just show you uh, how this would be done so so let's say that i want to put this uh, let's say this beanbag on my uh, in my scene all i need to do is click here it will download it directly from chaos cosmos and you can simply click here and now you just need to click where you want to position it so if i click here you will see that i'll be able to uh I'll, i'm gonna see how this is gonna look in my 
in my scene and uh, you can see here that it's a mesh but when I do the render it will look uh, exactly like like in that browser when you open up uh, V-Ray uh, you'll see that we have some options here and one of the options is to uh, see how you want to represent this so if this is something that has a lot of faces you may want to use bonic box and it will just be represented as a single box in this case we can keep it to low but this is just something to know that you can you can see so all of my all of my um, assets here that, that they have in the model are actually uh, created uh, from this browser but you can see for example that i i kept curtains as 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 a box uh, also i kept these uh, this is a plant and it just has one single polygon uh, because there's no need to to put more weight on your scene so again chaos cosmos you can you can find a lot of models here you can uh, find furniture you can find uh, lighting you can also find the vegetation uh, and there is even people uh, and models of people that we can choose from and uh, you also have some additional HDRI images if you want to uh, to to play around with with lighting. Uh, so great assets, and you can browse these models based on space as well, which is quite quite nice. And the best thing is that you don't need to optimize anything; it just simply works. So all of these models that you see here are from V-Ray Cosmos, and I think this is one of the best uh, features of V-Ray Five. But I would definitely want to see more of these, you know, collections and more and more models. Uh, that are coming in and here you can see the creators uh, the companies that are producing these uh, these models and of course if you want to just check to see if this is gonna work let's do a quick render I'm simply gonna click on the render button and let's see what happens so here is our uh, interactive render and here we can see that we have exactly the same type of you know uh, product the same type of model that we had in the chaos cosmos browser so Great work, guest group. Okay, so these were our favorite five new features of V-Ray for Rhino 5. And if you're interested to know about the workflow that shows in detail how to modify Chaos Cosmos assets in Grasshopper, you can find about that in our extended tutorial on our Patreon page. And if you decide to do this, you'll also get access to all of our extended tutorials and product files as well. The link is in the description of this video. Okay, so here are the final shots of this project done completely in V-Ray 5 for Rhino. Hope you enjoyed the video and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Take care.